Hey everybody, Star Six Wars One here, and welcome to my next movie for FMA Movie Month, which is the eighth one. For this one, we are looking at the top ten OSTs from FMA and FMA Brotherhood. Now, what I mean by OSTs are the original soundtracks. These are soundtracks that appear. These are sound clips that appear in the show that are done with music. I don't think I need to explain too too much more about that. Um, they appear in the music and they help in the background. So I'm devoting this list into the things of the OSTs for Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I will not be covering the movies from either one because I'm not fond because I'm not really all that caring about the uh, OST of Sacred Star of Melos and Conquer of Trombala has a few good tracks but not enough for me noteworthy to really care all that much so without further ado let's move on number 10 Knives and Shadows now, Knives and Shadows is one you've probably heard on my videos quite a few times before. I like to use this as the dramatic one, and to me it's Pride's theme. And I'll be getting into the fact of which ones I consider themes a bit more as we go along the list, but with this one, Knives and Shadows is probably the pretty good one and I do consider it Pride's theme it sounds terrifying and very um, tense and I think it's actually a pretty good horror track not the best one in it we'll be getting to that a little later but I definitely like it and it is my number 10 number 9 Nightmares from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Now, Nightmares is much like number 9, very ominous, but in a different sort of way. This one sounds a bit more sinister than Knives and Shadows, which sounds more like a frantic fear factor. This one sounds more ominous and a bit more creepy. And less about the action, but more about the ominous. Ultimately, what I'm going to say with this one was, this was the only one that I had a hard time picking. Because, I'll be honest, number 9 was... I really liked the track, but I never remembered its name. But, I'll be honest, I think this is a pretty good track, and let's move on to the next one. Number 8. Dante's theme from the 2003 series. Keeping up with the more ominous sounding ones, Dante's theme is the, one of the very few that has any type of vocal track to it. And only one of maybe two on my list. Uh, this is a creepy theme, but it fits Dante so, so well. And I have to admit to saying that Dante is creepy in herself, and I think her theme really fits. The reason it's number eight is more so because I just like the other ones more. But to me, Dante's theme will always remain this creepy, creepy theme, and her character will remain the creepy, creepy character. On to the next one. Number 7, Philosopher's Stone from the 2003 series. Now, to be fair, that this song is probably one of the shortest on this countdown. Unfortunately, that does hinder it a little, and that's why it's at number 7. But to be very honest, when it comes to ominous tracks, this is one of the better ones. And I really gotta say that it gives off a very, very creepy atmosphere for only playing for about a minute. So, that's about all the reason I can say to liking it. 
on to the next one. Number six, To Be King from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. This one has a very, um, is not quite ominous, but has a very booming and you are going to be chased down and beaten down kind of scenario to it. I find this is the closest thing I would call to the homunculi's theme in Brotherhood. And if I'm going to be frank, I consider it for their theme in general um, in the entire franchise. So yeah, there's that. The Philosopher's Stone was a pretty good ominous theme, but this one's a very good booming theme. And it's one I would really listen to quite a few times. Though I do admit the reason it's on number 5 is because it's, uh... Yeah. Yeah, it... The chanting can get a bit annoying at times. That's why it is only number 6. But it is my number 6. Now let's move on. Number 5. Equivalent Exchange from the 2003 series. Now, every single Full Metal Alchemist fan of the 2003 series should really know this theme. It plays at the very beginning of every episode, except the first. That's the only time it doesn't. Other than that, this is a very familiar theme to any FMA fan, and just brings and oozes nostalgia. Now, it's not any higher because it's kind of short, but I really do like it, and it is my number five. Number four, Kokai from the 2003 series. This one is very simple, just the harmonica. And just that kind of way it's played is just like, it feels like you're just taking a rest after what seems like a long battle, and reflecting upon it, and looking in shame. It's the shame and sadness of this song that really gets to me. And in my opinion, this is really, it describes Roy Mustang so well in 2003. And it's my personal theme for him in 2003. It's just so sad to hear and just kind of depressing. Um, really, I don't have much, uh, of a good reason why it's only number four just that it's kind of somber so with that said let's move on number three next chapter from full metal alchemist brotherhood okay this is the complete opposite of kokai this one is booming this one is bombastic this one is loud and this is ready to take the charge into battle it is the complete opposite of number four. And I also think this applies to Roy Mustang of the of Brotherhood. Well, the 2009 was more somber. This one's more ready for action and ready to do something. And he's not going to sit around and just wait for something to happen. He's going to go do it. And this theme really emphasizes that point. Is it perfect? No. But God, is it good? And it's my number three. Number two. The Jing Symphony from the Brotherhood soundtrack. This is by far my favorite track in Brotherhood. This is awesome. And it just it appears every time Ling does something epic. He or Lan Fan, or maybe even Fu. The Jing Symphony is one of the things I look the most forward to when I hear it. And I really, really hope to hell that they have more of it, except they don't. Oh, pity. I love the track, but I don't exactly think it's used enough. One thing that I will give it, though, it makes me really interested in the soundtrack, and it is my favorite in Brotherhood. But it's not number one. It's only number two. Number one surpasses any of the ones on my list. So, 
let us move on to that one. Now, before I say it right here, number one should be no surprise to anyone. And if you've seen my Full Metal Alchemist review, you will know straight away which one is my number one. But, for those of you who don't, my number one OST from FMA and FMA Brotherhood is Brothers from the 2003 series. This one alone makes the Full Metal Alchemist franchise's OST so worth the listen. This one is the grand um, OST. This one is the one I waited for. True, I prefer the instrumental version, and I always will, but my god, almost any version of Brothers that's official is amazing, and a 10 out of 10 when it comes to the song. It's also the one reason why I think the uh, Brotherhood soundtrack is a bit inferior. It doesn't have this one song, which speaks volumes of Ed's guilt. Ed and Al's guilt for trying to bring back their mother and failing miserably at it. And it shows that this very depressing song and the wondering of what to do now. Yes, it's a very sad song, admittedly, but I don't know if you could tell I kind of like sad songs. If Kokai was any indication and some ones in the next countdown which will still involve music is also going to tell that yeah sorry but yeah brothers will remain my favorite ost for a long time so in the end it will remain my number one anyways that's all for me this has been star six wars one and next time, we will be joining me for the final countdown of FMA Month, my top 10 openings and ending themes. See you guys then.